Hello, Ready Up Live. My name's Jeff Wood, and I'm here today to talk to you about Warzone. Warzone is the brand new Halo multiplayer mode that seems to be 343's answer to the current state of the first-person shooter. Taking elements from Battlefield, Titanfall, and other recent games, Warzone seems to be a Halo mode designed to compete with this type of experience. So what does this new game mode mean for Halo as a whole? Let's begin by talking about how Warzone will affect player population and matchmaking in general. Like any new game mode, this will create a new segment of the Halo multiplayer ecosystem. This means a new player population in the form of Warzone fans. However, because Warzone is designed to lure in people looking for a large-scale battle experience, I imagine this burgeoning segment of the community will not spend as much time in the more classic Halo Arena playlists. This isn't to say that people who like Warzone will never play any other Halo game type. Just like the Griffball player who will occasionally try out shooty Halo, I'm sure Warzone fans will find other things to enjoy in Halo 5. It would seem 343 wants this as well. They've gone so far as to give Warzone a leg up on its biggest competition inside the Halo ecosystem, Big Team Battle, which is the next thing I wanted to discuss. How will Warzone affect Big Team Battle? It would seem that 343 is concerned the majority of BTB players may not be willing to try out Warzone, so they have said that the Big Team Battle playlist will not be available when the game launches this fall. Don't worry though. It will be introduced shortly after the release of the game, with all the timed weapons and vehicle spawns you know and love on a number of maps specifically optimized for BTB. Since both modes offer big battle experiences, they may compete with each other for population. I think this is why 343 chose to postpone the Big Team Battle playlist until after launch. The addition of Warzone also means Big Team Battle will fall into a niche between the Arena and Warzone experiences, making it Halo's middle child. A uh, medium team battle, if you will. This might be another reason why they aren't launching with big team enabled. So new players looking for Warzone don't stumble into a big team game by accident. This news is going to upset some big team battle fans that feel their favorite game mode isn't getting enough love. But I imagine 343 is hoping the Warzone experience can at least partially make up for it. While 343 is pushing Warzone hard, they also don't want players to see it as taking away from the rest of Halo, or replacing content we usually receive which is exactly what I wanted to talk about next. What does Warzone tell us about Halo 5's map ratios? Since we know Halo 5 is launching with 20 maps, and 6 of these are dedicated to Warzone, that means there are 14 map slots left. We already know Eden, Empire, Fathom, Truth, and Regret are 5 of these 14. Let's call them the Arena maps. So now there are only 9 unknown maps left. If we include the mysteriously mountainous Forge canvas that Pegasus and Orion were built on, as well as the breakout arena that showcased Crossfire and Trench, that brings our list of unknown maps down to seven. Now, let's look back at the ratio of arena to big team battle maps in previous Halo games. If we look at these numbers, we can see that, with the exception of Halo 4, big team battle usually gets a little less content than arena. Even when factoring in Halo 4, big team battle makes up about an average of 35% of the total maps on launch for any given Halo game. With this in mind, I believe that Halo 5's maps will break down something like this. Six Warzone maps, eight Arena maps, three Big Team Battle maps, and three Forge canvases. If 343 chose a ratio like this, it would clearly state its priorities to the community. First, they want to preserve and support the core Halo Arena experience by providing eight maps, the largest amount proportionally at 40%, which is also on par with almost all the other Halo releases. Second, they want you to try out Warzone. It's a big new mode and they obviously put a lot of time and money into it, so they're pushing it pretty hard with 30% of the total maps being dedicated to it. Big Team Battle is getting a bit of a raw deal at three maps or 15% of the total maps overall. While that may seem like a small number, a ratio of eight arena maps to three BTB maps is actually exactly what Halo 3 launched with. So the amount of content players are getting would be in line with what they have come to expect from previous Halo games. Finally, I think there's one more Forge canvas, which coincidentally allows more space to create new BTB maps in Forge, something that isn't possible at all in Warzone. This also brings me to my next topic. How will Warzone affect the Forge? Well, at the moment, not at all. Warzone isn't forgeable. Let's look at the future of Halo, though. If Warzone is popular enough, it could be included in future Halo titles and adding Forge support to extend the game mode would become a high priority for 343. In order to do this, they would likely include a lot of features community cartographers have been requesting for a long time. 
Things like programmable AI or scripting custom events are important to a Warzone game, and so the ability to control and craft them would need to be added to the Forge. An update like this could be huge for Halo, spawning tons of crazy community-created stuff from new game types and maps to machinimas and more. This also means the only way to extend the Warzone experience will be through DLC. 343 announced an additional 6 Warzone maps, bringing the total up to a respectable 12 but with community-created content, you could really go crazy. Speaking of going crazy, did you hear about microtransactions in Halo? One of the biggest changes Warzone brings to Halo is the advent of in-game microtransactions in exchange for rec packs. Now, before you break your keyboard, it seems that 343 has put a lot of planning into this system to keep things from getting out of hand. In the game itself, your access to higher tier weapons is time-gated, so even if you have picked up some strong cards, you won't be able to use them until later in the game. The game's matchmaking system also matches you with players with similar cards, so things don't ever get too unfair. You could say this is opening the door to larger microtransactions in Halo, and you may be right, but that sounds like a slippery slope argument to me. Speaking of 343, what does Warzone mean for Halo's developers? Well, I think it shows that 343 has learned a lot from their past mistakes. They're still experimenting with Halo, but they've chosen the right side of the Halo multiplayer formula to play around with. Instead of tinkering with the traditional arena multiplayer, they are going after the social side of the Halo experience and creating a new game mode there. I think this is great. Halo needs to keep pushing the envelope to remain relevant in the modern FPS market, but it can't sacrifice its roots to do so. Warzone allows Halo to experiment with the modern first-person shooter formula while keeping the core arena gameplay that is most relevant to its fanbase. It's a win-win. I think Warzone means Halo is moving in the right direction and shows 343 is learning how to carry the series into the future while simultaneously respecting its past. Now, I think this is sort of also how Oni views the Chief. He's done all he can for the universe, and lately it seems like he's doing more harm than good. This is where the second part of the Osiris mythology comes into play. Judgment. In ancient Egypt...